How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up the administration components that we need to have in place in order to go through and have authentication capabilities and a way to interact with all of our VMware things that we're gonna be playing around with. So I'm gonna, this is a brand new install of, v, of uh, Windows Server 2012 R2. And I'm gonna walk you through the individual steps that we need to go through in order to make sure everything works the way that it needs to. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of the way. And one of the first things we're gonna to need to do is I'm going to make sure that VMware Tools is installed. So I'm gonna right click here and go to manage or uh, ma install VMware Tools. And that's going to trigger VMware Tools to get installed on this particular server. We're gonna go click on the file folder and you should see here that VMware Tools is there. I'm gonna click on it, run setup, and then we're gonna wait just a moment for the installer to boot up. We're gonna go through the individual steps in order for all that stuff to get up and running. It's not too terribly long to do, but it's, I would rather have VMware Tools installed in the event that I need to console into the device, and so everything is there. So give it a moment and the installer should launch. And we're gonna click on next, typical install, next, and then install. I'm gonna pause the video while this process uh, goes along its path, and then I'll bring you guys back in once we are done and we're ready to go. All right, so now that VMware Tools has been set up, we're actually gonna to have to do a reboot, but you'll notice that we went from a partial window to a full screen. That's one of the first things that VMware Tools is a benefit for us with. I'm gonna go ahead and click on finish but we're gonna, um, it asked me, do you, you must restart your system for the configuration to take effect. Click yes if you want to restart now. No, we will restart later. I'm gonna to come here to the local server and I'm gonna go ahead and change a couple of things. So for example, the IE enhanced security configuration, I'm gonna turn it off for administrators and click on okay. And then I'm also gonna change the time zone because it is actually not Pacific time that I'm in. I am in, so change time zone, I am actually in Central US time in Canada, Central time US in Canada. I'm gonna click on okay there. And then the next one I'm gonna do is with the computer name. I'm gonna change that to be DC1 and click on okay. And every little everything that I'm doing now requires a reboot. So I'll close, restart later. And last but certainly not least, I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and change the IP addressing here. I'm gonna to go to properties, IPv4, and then underneath here I'm gonna type in 10.2, well, turn the num lock on, 10.255.1.51 slash 24 subnet mask, and then a default gateway. I'm going to point to myself as the DNS server, because this is where the DNS server will be installed, and I'm also gonna do quad eight for DNS. Click on okay, close, close, and I should be squared away there, and it, it, it is, because I've already given myself the correct information that I need to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna click here on the power button, or the start menu, excuse me, click on the power options and go to restart, and I'm going to continue with the reboot and let Windows Server restart. Once I'm done with that, then we'll be in good shape. I'm gonna pause the video until this guy reboots. All right, so we have the reboot is completed. So I'm gonna click in here and right click, send control, delete, and now we can go ahead and log in again. Now we have changed the name of the PC from whatever arbitrary name was given through Windows doing their, whatever they want to call that install process naming convention over to DC1, something very easy to understand and relate to. So, and we can just validate that by looking at DC1 and we know we're in good shape. So that's basically where we are at in terms of at least the initial step. The next thing we need to go do is go through the, the beginning processes of setting up the domain controller capability. So this is actually a two-step process. The very first step is installing the role of Active Directory Domain Services. Once we do that and accomplish that goal, the next step will be to actually promote a server to a domain controller role. Once we go through that process, 
we'll have to go through all those details. I'll walk you through the installer. It's actually very, very easy to, to install Wizard. It's kind of a no-brainer. Nice thing about in Server 2012 and newer, you no longer have to go to the command line and type in DC promo. Now it's just a clickety-click way of doing things. It's much easier to work with and easy to get up and running. And once you would do all that, you're in really good shape. At that point, we'll be able to then add a user and all that good stuff. And then I'll walk you through the DNS entries because we're going to be deploying. Um, initially, it's going to be a couple of ESXi hosts per version of ESXi. So we're going to be working with three different versions of ESXi, 6, 6.5, and 6.7. I can't hold my third finger down. And the reason why we're going to do that is we want to play around with ESXi before we throw it into vCenter. You know, play around with all the same capabilities that you, or some of the same capabilities that you would see inside of vCenter, but where you may not actually have vCenter deployed. I've worked with several customers that are smaller that don't have any type of vCenter deployment. They have a couple of physical servers with a lot of resources, and they, they use vCenter, or sorry, vSphere to do their rollout. Instead of having multiple physical servers, they can buy one bigger one and have everything co-located there. A lot of times customers will actually have two servers, one in you know, a rack and then one right below it and stuff like that. And this way they're here, if one ha something happens to the primary server, they have a backup server with all the same bits and bytes going on inside of it. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the actual deployment piece of that. So we're actually gonna click on uh, manage and we're gonna to go to add roles and features. We're gonna click next. And then role-based or feature-based installation. This is the, the, uh, the box that we're gonna to install it to. Next. And then we're gonna click on Active Directory Domain Services. We're gonna check that box. It's gonna add in a whole bunch of additional stuff. And we're gonna add features. And then click on next. And there's a bunch of other things that we can do in here as well, but for right now, we're not really concerned about any of that. We just wanna make sure that we get everything deployed that we need to enable to do what we want to do. There will be a point in time in the future where I go through and I cover some of these topics that are available here, but uh, right now we're not gonna go into any of that type of stuff. Next, uh, next, and then we're gonna go ahead and in install. This is goes back to a hurry up and wait type of paradigm where we just need to let the installer do its job. And then once we are done, we are going to go and promote that server to a domain controller. But for right now, I'm gonna pause the video and we'll go back in once we're ready to go. All right, so now we have the ADDS service has now been installed, but now we have to take an additional step which is we have to click on this promote server to to a domain controller. Now, I do want to preface that you have this um, this guy right here. If we were to click on it, the same thing would pop up here. So in the event that this little pop-up window went away, you could click on promote this server to a domain controller option as well. It's up to you and how you want to do that. I'm going to click on here and click on it. And that's going to trigger the director uh, the domain controller configuration window to pop up. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the details to how Active Directory works and force and domains and all that type of stuff. That's well outside of the, the scope of this video. Basically, what I wanna do now is I want to configure this to be a new force. So I wanna be a little bit, basically like a, a new administration domain. Think of it like that, kind of like an like a autonomous system if you're in BGP or an EIG or P or an area zero, if you will. That's basically what I'm trying to set up. So that's what I'm gonna do here, and I'm gonna go and use lab.local. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here, click on new forest. The new root domain is gonna be lab.local, and I'm gonna click on next. The process is actually very straightforward. We just have to go through the steps that we need to get it up and running. Now, there is a forest functional level and there's a domain functional level, and I'll wait till the, you can drop down here and, and you can always downgrade if you want to make, basically take capabilities away, you can go down to as early as to server 2008. But in this case here, I want to make sure that the forest and the domain functional level is 2012R2 and go from there. So the password I'm going to type in here is just a standard password and we should be in pretty good shape there. 
and you can use whatever password you want to have in there. I'm going to click next and then it says a delegation of this DNS server cannot be created because the authoritative parent zone cannot be found. And it gives you a whole bunch of information. I'm just going to click on next and I don't really care at this moment. Now what's going to happen is it's going to pull the lab.local and it's going to populate lab right here in just a moment. And then I'm going to click on next and it's going to go through the rest of its configuration steps where it's going to store all the details of what's going on and what it's going to uh, do and now it's going to do a prerequisite check to make sure everything is squared away. I'm going to wait patiently for this to finish. Now just uh, as a preface to some of the stuff that's going to could happen is if you and I found out this the hard way if you go through and you try to do deploy Active Directory certificate services basically make this a certificate authority for your domain before you configure it as a domain controller. That's not going to happen. It's not going to work. So uh, just throwing that out there because there is the possibility of using uh, the certificate authority to exchange certificates with vCenter down the road. We're not going to really do that right now, but for I just want to throw that out there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on install because the prerequisites all passed. We're going to click install and let it do its thing. So now I'm just going to click the pause button until this is completed and then we'll have to reboot and we'll log in as a domain admin. Alright, so because of the install was completed fine, it's going to go through the process of rebooting and I like to try to beat the setup to it and I didn't. So that's okay though. It's going to go through a reboot and then when it reboots, it'll take a couple of additional moments for it to reboot because now it's going to be booting as a domain controller, so there's additional bits that it's got to load. But once we do go through all that process, then we'll be in good shape. We'll be able to dive into the additional steps. So we'll set up a couple of DNS entries, and then we're also going to set up some uh, window. We'll go into another video and we'll add Windows 10 to the domain and get all that stuff squared away. But for, as far as I'm concerned right now, everything else is looking pretty good. I'm going to pause until this is back up and running. All right, so after a reboot, we are back in shape. So we should be able to um, click in here and send control delete. And now we log in as lab and backslash administrator. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with that password that we set up. And now you can see that we are logged in it's really the look and feel is no really no different but once server manager loads up we'll see that we'll have a couple additional services we'll have dns we'll have adds active directory domain services so on and so forth so i'll take just a couple of moments for all that to load up and we'll be in good shape now at this point in time we're actually officially done with all of that Active Directory domain controller installation and promotion, all that type of stuff. The next step is to go through and do the DNS configurations and add the users and things like that. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. We're going to go over here to um, manage, I'm sorry, under tools, and then we're going to go to Active Directory users and computers and uh, we commonly refer to as that as ADOC in the industry, at least I do. And if you expand lab.local and then you expand users, you notice there's nothing there. If you click on it, you'll get a whole bunch of stuff in here. So the one that I want you to pay attention to here is administrator. If you right click on this and go copy, you can create another user with the same capabilities. In other words, you want to make sure you create a user that is in the same groups, the same authorization groups so that you can do whatever you need to do. So I'm gonna create Rob and then Riker and then do a rriker at lab.local. Click next, type in a password of your choosing and I'm going to say the password never expires and next and finish. So there I've got Rob Riker is squared away and we are ready to go. Now that's a duck. Now you go back to tools and you come underneath the DNS. So DNS wise, you're gonna click under here, underneath forward lookup zones, expand, lab.local, and you can come in here and add additional um, entries in for Azure Directory. So you can right click here, go new host, 
and then you can type in the name of the device that you want to connect into. First thing that I recommend you do is make sure that the IP addresses that you're going to be allocating are not in use currently. So I actually have a spreadsheet to show you real quick if I was to pull up Excel and pull up Excel real quick and let me go ahead and um, enable editing and close this out. So what I have here is a little spreadsheet of the devices we're going to be using. We'll talk about VMware networking in an upcoming video, but host wise, there's a few things that I want to add in here. So the very uh, first two nodes of each one of these host levels, so 6.0, dash one and dash two will be these IP addresses. So we've already got it laid out. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and add in our DNS entries for our six hosts that we're going to be basically using as if they were standalone devices. So we're going to right click in here and go a new host. And then in here we're going to type in ESXi 6-1 and 10.255.1.60. Add host. And then we're going to type in ESXi 6-2 10.255.1.60. Add host. Okay. ESXi 65-1, 10.255.1.65, and then ESXi 65-2, 10.255.1.66, and then ESXi 67-1, 10.255.1.70, and ESXi 67-2, 10.255.1.71. Beautiful. So done. Now we have all of our entries added. 61, 62, 651, 652, 671. Beautiful. So now we have all of our DNS entries in play. So now what we get to go do is at this point we are done with DNS. There's not a whole lot more we can do. But when we go in to add our ESXi servers, then we'll be able to point them to this and then we'll be able to configure the DNS entries as we're building them, and then that will give us the ability of validating a lot of configurations so that when we go to connect to them through our Windows 10 to, uh, admin server or admin PC, we'll be able to pull them up via DNS entry and not just by name. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.